Leading up to the truce talks between Hamas and Israel, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken held extensive discussions in West Jerusalem on Wednesday, focusing on efforts to secure a ceasefire in the Gaza Strip. Netanyahu's office issued a brief statement describing the meeting as long and in-depth. Blinken arrived in Israel to discuss a potential framework agreement for a ceasefire in Gaza and a hostage swap with Israel. The top U.S. diplomat is set to meet with other key officials, including Israeli President Isaac Herzog and Defense Minister Yoav Gallant, during his visit. Blinken briefed leaders on a Qatari-brokered proposal and stated that more work is required to reach a deal. Earlier in the day, according to a draft document seen by Reuters, the Hamas counterproposal outlines three 45-day truce phases, including prisoner exchanges and Gaza reconstruction, leading to complete Israeli withdrawal and remains exchanges. The report mentions that Israeli authorities are debating whether to outright reject Hamas's proposals or seek alternative conditions, asserting that Israel won't withdraw its troops from Gaza until Hamas is eliminated. The Gaza Health Ministry reported that at least 27,708 Palestinians have lost their lives, and 67,147 have been injured in Israeli strikes on Gaza since October 7. In the past 24 hours alone, 123 Palestinians were reported killed, and 169 others sustained injuries in the ongoing conflict. In the updates leading up to Pakistan's general elections, a wave of violence has shaken the country, claiming the lives of at least 28 people in attacks across various regions. The day's first tragedy struck at Pishan when a devastating explosion near independent candidate Asfandiar Kaka's election office resulted in 14 deaths and 30 injuries. Shortly after, chaos ensued in Killer Saifullah as a second blast outside the election office of Zui F claimed 12 more lives. In Karachi's Gulshan i Iqbal, another act of violence unfolded as a hand grenade explosion near Haji Limo Goth resulted in one fatality and three injuries. This incident adds to the grim toll of 28 lives lost on the eve of the general elections, marking a concerning escalation in security threats. Responding to these alarming events, Pakistan's foreign office announced the closure of border crossings with Afghanistan and Iran on February 8, 2024, for both cargo and pedestrians. This precautionary measure aims to safeguard the integrity of the electoral process, with normal operations expected to resume on February 9, 2024. Later in the day, Zui F leader Hafiz Hamdullah's vehicle came under gunfire in Balochistan's Chaman, the party's provincial information secretary, Dilawar Kaka, told Dawn.com. Amidst these challenges, Pakistan braces itself for the upcoming general elections, grappling with security concerns while reaffirming the resilience of its democratic democratic ideals. 